the heart of Madagascar still rumbles with geological activity. The centre of the island is a wide plateau of uplifted rock. Here there are still thousands of earthquakes every year. Over eons of time, millions of these tiny earthquakes have torn a vast hole right in these central uplands, forming this Madagascar's biggest lake, Lac Aleotra. Around the edges of this massive body of water, there are reed beds. But the vegetation is not fixed. It floats in great mats in water three meters deep. It's tricky and inaccessible to most, but one creature has adapted to live here and only here. This is the Lac Aleotra reed lemur. Not only is it small enough to climb the thinnest reeds, it can also survive on a diet of tough grass. Unusually for a primate, it lives its whole life over water, and it only lives on this one lake. This family group has a patch of reeds to themselves. But they have a problem. To find enough to eat, you have to move from reed bed to reed bed. And that takes skill and practice. These lemurs can swim, but they prefer not to. So they have developed a special technique for crossing the reed beds without ending up in the water below. Their mother is an old hand. Even with a baby on her back, she's sure-footed, and her older children are getting the hang of it. These lemurs are so specialised that they would struggle to live anywhere else. Much of Madagascar's wildlife is secretive and a challenge to find, let alone film. The team were keen to tell the story of a little lemur that only lives on this one remote lake. There are very few of them left because they've long been hunted and the reed beds where they live are being cut down. But in one village on Lac Aleotra, the local people have made strenuous efforts to save the reed lemurs, and they knew where they might be found. 
Hatfield assistant Jonathan Feely and cameraman Gavin Thurston set out with local fisherman and wildlife guide Indrina Roger Honson, who spent many months following the lemurs. The team wanted to film its specialised way of moving through these floating beds of reeds. Easy for the lemurs, not so easy for a film crew. In fact, in the tangled reed beds, it seemed almost impossible even to see them at all. They're so nimble, they simply melt away into the reeds. The team negotiated the channels in an attempt to trap them down. The trouble was, there's no dry land here. Gavin would have to try and film them from a canoe. Following a cyclone, the lake was deep and the water particularly choppy. We're going to need a bigger boat. <laughs> it's way too rocky and the boat's going all over the shop. Uh, we've got a few toys up our sleeve. We've got a big stick to help stabilise the canoe. This must look like sort of amateurville. Um, <laughs> And it is quite precarious, you know, we've got sort of 40,000 pounds worth of camera balanced in a rocky canoe, which looks like we've just hired it from the local boating lake. But uh, I'm feeling positive. It was back to base for plan B. Gavin and Indrina decided to build a platform. But it would have to be very carefully designed. It turned into quite an undertaking. trying to adapt this construction so that we, when we get out to the reeds, we don't need to, need to use any nails at all. I'm just worried if they start banging the nails, they drive these animals with them deeper into the reeds. So we're making this uh, precarious four metre high platform above the water without any nails. At dawn the next day, the platforms were loaded up to be taken out to the reed beds. Getting the canoes through the tangled vegetation was hard enough. Moving through with the platforms was a different matter. And the whole operation had to be completed as quietly as possible for fear of scaring the lemurs. One false move and the whole team would end up in the water. At last, a clear and stable view through the reed bed. Gavin got himself settled and started filming. But it wasn't easy. The very thing he wanted to film, the lemurs on the move, was limited by the fact that when they moved off, Gavin could only wait for them to return. It's quite frustrating, really, because it doesn't matter how much experience you've got. With something like this, filming from the boat was too wobbly, and working off the platform, you're literally stuck in one place in the hope that they'll come within sight. I think we'll get it. In between that and this sort of cyclonic weather. <laughs> Just as they'd got set up, a storm was rolling in. The last place you want to be is on a lake, in a canoe, in a thunderstorm. So they paddled back as quickly as they could and then could only wait for the storm to pass. That took three days. Finally, it dawned clear and calm. things were looking more promising. We oui. I got you the platform. Gavin's just inside the rain bed right over there. We set him up at about 5.20 this morning. The team were in luck. The lemurs were feeding right next to where Gavin was stationed. 
With Indrina's careful guidance, they were in the right place at the right time. It might look a bit Heath Robinson, but at last Gavin was getting shots of one of the world's rarest lemurs moving and feeding in the reeds, and for the first time, a mother and her baby. But even after 10 days, they were still unpredictable. Seven o'clock in the morning. They've gone to sleep. They're just tucked down in here asleep. I've really quite grown to like them. It's just quite sad that they are critically endangered. They only live in the reeds around this one lake, and there's very few small areas, areas of reeds left. And if those reeds do disappear, then the lemurs are going to disappear with them. And I think it'd be really sad to lose such a cute, cuddly little lemur like that. These little lemurs have been pushed to the brink of extinction by hunting and the gradual destruction of their reed beds. But the quiet determination of people like Andrina mean that local attitudes are beginning to change. Avant, tous les gens chassent et mangent les lemuriens. Mais maintenant, c'est plus ou moins protégé parce que les gens sont sensibilisés et protègent cet lemurien parce qu'il est spécial. Seul spécial dans le lac. C'est ça. Madagascar is one of the poorest countries in the world. It's as much as most people can do to earn a basic living from the land. And yet it may be the passion and involvement of local people that is key to preserving its unique and increasingly fragile wild treasures. <laughs> <laughs> 